Are home prices still rising in the Bay Area? Is inventory getting any better? Do you still have plans to buy or sell a place this year or leading up to 2024? We're going to dive into the data so that you can see for yourself what is actually happening with the Bay Area real estate market. But for today's clip too, I'm going to be going over a recent video as to what the media is portraying. And we're going to correct a few things that they're trying to highlight which isn't really true. My name is Spencer Sue, your Bay Area real estate agent. And if you want to go over a game plan, go to my calendar link below and let's set up a time to go over a strategy call. Whether you're trying to make a move this winter or you're planning for next year, I'm here to be a resource and I'm here to help you be successful. Let's get into it. We're going to first start off with this recent clip from NBC Bay Area. Why the Silicon Valley housing market is extra hot right now. Let's listen to what they have to say and then I'm going to point out some actual data and stats throughout, but also point over more details at the end. Valley housing market is extra hot these days with prices hitting all time highs. Let's take a look at that. Is it really hitting all time highs? Well, let's compare. Let's look at the last three years. Median price sales. Are they actually all time highs? The answer is no. First myth busted, but catch a headline. Let's resume. Let's bring in our business and tech reporter, Scott Budman. Scott, what's driving prices up specifically in Silicon Valley? You know, it's the jobs and the tech companies and people coming back to work. Janelle, mm -hmm. Silicon Valley, no stranger to high housing prices, but now more than most areas, it's, it's where techies are being told, hey, come on back mm -hmm. to the office and therefore live in this area. I would agree on that. That is absolutely true. Commute is real. People are getting back into the office. Most of them are not doing it five days a week, but three days a week is still quite a bit of a traffic, especially if you're coming from somewhere far. So that part is true. And that's sending prices even higher. Signe and David Diaz, like many Silicon Valley homeowners, are happy to live here but worried about the cost of living here. With property taxes and all of the expenses that come with it, it gets hard. And according to joint venture Silicon Valley, that cost is going up. We still have a really high draw of people that want to live here near their jobs. The median Silicon Valley home price up 7% in a year to an all-time high. Once again, that information is inaccurate. It is not at an all-time high. It is still about 6 to 7% lower than the all-time high, which was last April and May. Now, is it higher than the same time last year? The answer is absolutely. Take a look at what the numbers have been in October. You can see median price 1.549 versus 1.385. It did go up quite a bit, and that's what I mentioned to other people. Just because rates are higher does not correlate to home prices going down because at the end of the day, it's still supply and demand. While demand has dropped, it's still more of number of homes to purchase. Keep that in mind. Here's what that looks like in dollar form. As of last year, the average home price here in Silicon Valley was just a shade over one and a half million dollars. If you break that down to just single family homes, like what you see along this street, the average goes up to $1.9 million. But while the market is hot, more people are moving out than moving in. Joint Venture says it's about money. And high housing costs was the number one most often cited reason for, for potentially leaving the area. The Diaz family. So this is a very important thing to understand. It, and it makes zero sense what the, this person is hoping for banking on. If people were leaving out of the area, why are home prices going up more significantly more than last year? You think they're just leaving and keeping their home? No, when they leave, they can cash out on their home. But if there are more people leaving than people coming in, then why are home prices a lot higher? Does this logic not make sense for other people? That's not what's happening. Clearly, there is more people moving in. Clearly, there's more people willing to settle down. That is why prices are higher. Hopefully that gives you some idea of what is really happening. He admits they think about it. I mean, going somewhere where it's more cost effective and the money can go longer now that we're thinking about his future. But if they sold, well, thanks to red hot tech companies like Santa Clara's NVIDIA, there will be no shortage of stock option techies to snatch up anything for sale. 
I mean, we are seeing houses come on the market if they're priced well and they show well, they are selling within a week and often still with multiple offers. We're going to talk about multiple offers momentarily because there's a very big difference. Are prices actually increasing that drastically month over month? We'll go over that details in a bit. Still in Silicon Valley, according to the survey, okay. it is Santa Clara, home of NVIDIA. Ah. Each house for sale had an average of nine offers, and they're popping by something near 10% above asking price. Wow. So we're seeing that. Again. Wow, that sounds really bad. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to make it seem like there's a 10% increase versus the actual value of the home. But the fact is, let's take a look at the data itself. While home prices are much higher than it was last year, take a look at what it has been over the last year itself. If you take a look at the chart and understand this, home prices, while they have increased, have only increased by like 1% or so. So this whole idea of, oh, 10% above list price makes it feel like, wow, are, are homes actually being overdone by 10%? I don't want to go in this bidding war. There's just so many different buyers out there. But when you actually see it, they've been very predictable. Yes, are they increasing? Absolutely, they're increasing by 1%. So when you look at other homes that have sold in the last few months, and you put a 1% or 2% premium on those other homes and their condition and the location, you will be successful. It's not going 10% over the actual worth. This is a huge misnomer. Now, why do they list it lower? because then they can get those nine offers. But it doesn't mean that the prices are skyrocketing 10% every month. But when I hear this, there's a clear portrayal that they wanna have to get people riled up. And I'm here to counter that by, by you seeing the actual data itself. Again, but in that one Silicon Valley niche. Yeah, because most of the other parts of the Bay Area, the market housing market is slowing. So is this the one big difference because people are going back to work and they just want to live close to work and they're buying these homes? Yeah, it really is. It's the difference between now and, say, a couple of years ago, tech companies saying, hey, we really want you back in the office at least for three days a week. Mm -hmm. And so people are saying, okay, if I've got those stock options that I can cash mm -hmm. in, I'm going to buy a home because I know I'm going to be here a while and now I have to go back to the office. And so that's largely what these people are saying. Silicon Silicon Valley is seeing even more than the rest of the Bay Area. And NVIDIA people. They may that I would agree with because commute is real. Companies are requiring people to be back in the office. So those that are living like in Tracy, Brentwood, these places that are further out, they may not be open to that anymore. Now they may have to make trade-offs either by paying more or buying a condo and townhome to be able to be close to work. So that is a good statement and that is accurate made a lot of money those stockholders that stock has tripled in one year yeah. so yeah they can buy houses okay now that is true actually when it came to nvidia and those who have owned nvidia shares congratulations to you congratulations to all of your friends those are the people that have significant amount of savings and a significant amount of down payment as long as they kept the shares that's a different question altogether but take a look at this right just this year alone it went up virtually about 300 percent which is absolutely incredible. So there is absolutely a fact that some shareholders, especially if you work at NVIDIA, have a tremendous more liquidity. And to be fair, it makes sense for what they need to do. If your stock is at an all-time record high and you now also cross the $1 trillion club, it's your bet to make. Do you want to take some of that out and de-risk yourself? One, you are working there still, so you probably get more stock. Two, your stock is at an all-time record high. So why don't you take some of that out? Maybe skim it out. Take 50% of that earnings. Put it into a, another asset like real estate. Not a bad move. Quite frankly, probably a good financial decision. That's up to you to decide. So that is happening, especially for those, and not just NVIDIA, but there's many other companies there at Apple, these, et cetera, et cetera. Now let's take a look at the data itself because let's review some of those stats that people have mentioned. This is for all residential properties in Santa Clara County. You can see that the median price is at $1.55 million. Let's go over a few of the stats you can see. So not just the prices are continuing to still minorly increase. Let's take a look at the sales to list price ratio. It was brought up. It was going for quote unquote 10% more. From a median perspective, single family condo and townhome, it is less at 104%. However, single family is more competitive. So let's take a look at the sales price to list price ratio of single family. When you take a look at that, it's still not actually 110%. It's actually 105%. But you just saw previously, home prices have increased only 1% over the last month. And let's say 2% over the last two months. 
right? But when you actually look at the stats here, the sales to list price is 105%. Now, it does not mean it is increasing 5% every month. It means by default, on average, people are actually listing it lower on purpose. So what does that mean? What's a lesson that can be beneficial for yourself? If you're looking at a $2 million home and your max budget is $2 million, stop with your filters at $2 million. Maybe put a 5% buffer. Maybe have it sorted for under 1.95. Like these are some just helpful things so you don't get deceived. Now, to be fair, neither one of us controls how a listing price is determined. They can list it for 10% below. They can list it for 20% below. That is entirely up to them. So don't be deceived and don't feel bad. It was never a X price to begin with. It was always going to sell, as you can see, with other homes that have sold recently. Let's take a look at new listings. Has that improved much? If you take a look at this, new listings. October has been a small decline, but to be fair, look at these numbers. They're actually not that bad. There was equivalent to almost 1,200 homes that came on the market this last month. This number is actually some of the highest still relative to the entire year. This was actually higher than the traditional busy time of the springtime. We actually had a decent amount of homes that came on the market. Take a look at the final stat here. Days to sell the median you will see that home, homes are still selling very quickly. The median days to sell is nine days. So it's not getting any faster, that much slower, because at the end of the day, one weekend, maybe two, depending if there's a holiday, is more than enough time for plenty of buyers to be able to just make a decision and choose to move forward or not with the property. Now, I do want to share with you the median sales prices for other counties to see how that compares with the others. San Mateo County. You can see October has done very, very well for this county. It has been a, a decent increase versus the last few months. So San Mateo County, which is a very prime area because of its location between San Francisco and Silicon Valley, has done well. Let's take a look at the data for Alameda County. It's a little bit of a commute for others, but it's more affordable than some of these markets. You can see they have held really well and relatively flat. Let's take a look at places that are a little bit farther. Let's see if that video was accurate. Contra Costa County. You can see it has slowed down. It has actually declined. So this could be an opportunity if you are willing to have flexibility with work and you're open to go a little bit further out. You can see there has been some softness for the places a little bit further out. And last but not least, let's look at San Francisco. San Francisco has actually done pretty well. You can see that things have continued to move. Prices are continuing to improve. Even though you hear all these negative things about the city, the lifestyle is a great lifestyle out there. So a lot of people choose to want to be in that city. Now, the difference of San Francisco, let's take a look at the medium days to sell. Because you also have a mix of condos there, condos do change this number significantly. But you can see it does take longer to sell, but it's still, as you can see with good properties, still moving pretty quickly, 19 days to sell. The whole exercise of why I do this monthly is because you're going to constantly hear all these different videos and these articles that are showing you just completely late data or they want to make things just way more dramatic than they are. When you actually see the data, what I just pulled is the data in real time. Many media outlets tend to find things when they do these articles and these stories. Who knows, like the last quarter, like that's all irrelevant today. But you can see that home prices are still doing very strong, even though rates are rising. And why is that? And what is my prediction of 2024? It's probably going to be over an extended period of time, likely that way, just because we have very tight inventory. Rates are still likely going to keep rising. But because of that squeeze, when rates rise even more, there's even less sellers. However, there are always people that need to keep making their moves. It is entirely up to you, but those are the things that are happening right now in the Bay Area marketplace. I don't like rates being higher either. As you can see, the number of transactions and the number of homes that come on the market don't, don't get better. So it's not really beneficial for me, but it's important for you to understand what your options are and be mindful. Most of you have the ability to still buy or make a move today. It's a matter of just understanding what you can buy up to with today's rates and then making a move in the right areas for that. If you're looking to make a move in the Bay Area, find a time in the calendar below and set up a strategy call so that we can go over the best options for you and create a foundation together. See you in the next one.